Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's session of ISE's Lunch and Learn, focused on the CPQ product from Infor. Uh, we are calling this web series our summer journey because it is a series of four different webinars over the course of the summer, which ends at, with the uh, workshop at the Empower Conference. And I'll spend a little more time talking about all that in a few minutes. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sherry Widrick. I am a senior account executive with ISE. And with me today, we have Charles Hood as our keynote speaker. Charles Hood is one of ISE's senior account, uh, sorry, senior programmer analysts uh, with many years experience with XA and CPQ. So Charles and I are very excited that you are here with us today on this very unique journey uh, to hopefully help you understand better uh, how the CPQ, the N4 CPQ solution could work for your company. This unique journey uh, is different than most lunch and learns and most webinars that you've been to in that we're hoping to help you build a prototype uh, at, at no additional cost. So there's no fees associated with our services in, in this uh, engagement. But we'll be working with you to build a uh, a mini proof of concept, if you will, for uh, using the CPQ product with your own data. So it'll give you a good understanding of how the product could work for you and your company. Um, just a couple administrative topics before we get started. Um, all participants are in listen only mode. So if you have any questions during the course of this session, please feel free to use the chat feature. Um, and then we will answer all of those questions at the end of the session. If for some reason we run over, because we tend to do that from time to time, um, we will make sure all of the questions are answered uh, and documented and sent back to you via email. Um, so let's see, I'm going to go ahead and share the agenda with you. So this is our agenda. Um, I'm going to give you a, a brief overview of the journey as I just described, and then we're going to take two quick polling questions. This will give us a better understanding of uh, where you are in your CPQ journey. Um, and then I'll just spend a couple minutes talking about the Infor Enterprise quoting solution, and then I'll turn it over to Charles, who will be, as I said, the keynote speaker, and will walk you through uh, the concept of today's session, which is quotation automation. And then we'll come back and spend a little more time on how we're going to go about building your prototype and then hopefully answer all the questions that you have. So this is, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my camera because it can get a little annoying probably for both of us. So <laughs> I am going to turn off my camera. And then I'm going to go ahead and give you an overview of the journey. So um, the first session today uh, is focused on the quoting uh, solution or enterprise quoting. And then in two weeks, we will have a session on what we're calling the interactive visual engagement and augmented reality features of CPQ. And then in two more weeks, we're going to talk about how in the data integrates between XA and CPQ. And then on the fourth session, we are going to have what we're calling an open mic roundtable, where we'll have customers who will share their experiences throughout their journey with CPQ, as well as some other experts uh, on the board so that you can ask all of the questions that you may have about the CPQ product. And then the final destination, as I mentioned, will be at the Empower Conference in Milwaukee, um, September, actually our, our workshop will be September 14th, but the Empower Conference starts on the 11th, which will be focused on Enterprise Integrator, and then the 12th and 13th will be focused on XA as well as other ERP, you know, I-Series ERP solutions like LX and System 21. And then on the 14th will be more of a focused day for uh, different products, of which CPQ will be one of those for this workshop. So we're hoping that you join us throughout this entire journey because, uh, like I said, this will be a very unique experience. This is the second year that we have done this. Um, so we're a little more uh, <laughs> experienced with um, promoting this journey and how to put the prototypes together. So the good news is you're not the first ones on the block. <laughs> so now let's talk about the building blocks for the uh, prototype. So at a super high level, uh, we're building this little mini proof of concept with you using your data, bills, routers, photos, 3CAD drawing, or 2D if you don't have uh, if you don't have 
3D. And then we'll have a, a short questionnaire. And all of these services that we are providing to you are at no charge. And then as just to reiterate, we'll have the workshop at the conference. So I'll spend more time on the back end of this talking through these different building blocks and how we'll go about doing that. So as part of today's session, uh, or these sessions altogether, uh, we are uh, offering a special thank you gift. We're calling it our summer series swag bag uh, as a token of our appreciation because we understand that this is an investment of your time and um, hopefully it'll be very valuable along the way. Uh, but as a thank you, if you participate in all four sessions and go to the conference, then um, we will provide this gift bag of uh, you know, a cooler, beach blanket, tumbler, sunglasses, and a $35 gift card um, so that you can order your favorite beverage from Craft Shack to fill your cooler. So, so we want to thank you in advance for your time. So, all right. So now Christine, with Christina's help, um, we're going to send out a polling question that basically will help us understand why you are here today. Christine, are you able to submit those questions? Um, I think it will, I'm gonna message you on how to do it since you're the host. Okay. Well, here, if, if that's, it might be easier just to, because I'm not seeing the message come across. Um, maybe if you could just tell me in the chat and you can make it private if you don't wanna make it. Um, visible to everyone. Just let me know why you're here today. Um, do you have products that are difficult to customize? Are you looking to have that 3D visual representation on your website? Uh, is your website not very engaging? Um, do you not know how to differentiate your product from your competitors? Do you have long delays in introducing new product launches and or generating proposals? Uh, do you have too many estimating errors in your quotes? Do you have too many manual activities throughout the entire quoting process? Uh, do you have domain knowledge or tribal knowledge that might be walking out the door or has walked out the door and you're looking to find a system to help streamline uh, that tribal knowledge? Um, are your proposals uh, maybe not very professional looking or lacking in important data? Are you looking to incorporate e-commerce uh, into your quoting system? So if you could just take a few minutes and let us know via chat, uh, that will be super helpful in letting us know uh, why you're here today and where you are in your journey. And then as part of the second question, which will be super helpful to us is, have you ever seen CPQ before? And this is just a simple yes, no, or I'm not sure. <laughs> Again, uh, I'm going to give a super high level overview of enterprise quoting. Um, but if, if we need more time together after this session, I am more than happy to take you to a more detailed level presentation of enterprise quoting and enterprise configurator as which are part of the N4 Cloud CPQ solution. So if you haven't seen it before, um, we're only going to scratch the surface in today's session, but we may need uh, to spend a little more time together somewhere down the road and I'm happy to do that. All right, thank you for that. All right, so I wanna spend a few minutes with you just to talk about what is enterprise quoting. So enterprise quoting is part of the N4 CPQ cloud solution. There are really basically two major components of N4 cloud CPQ, the enterprise quoting and the enterprise configurator. So today we're going to spend a little more time talking about the enterprise quoting aspect. So you may wonder what does CPQ even stand for? Uh, so CPQ, the C stands for configure, where we can help you configure maybe more complex products. Maybe you have full-blown systems. Uh, maybe you have even services that you want to incorporate into your products. So we can configure all of those things uh, with the Enforce CPQ tool. Um, it'll help you, the P stands for pricing. So it'll help you uh, manage your pricing for your customers, your dealers, your distributors. You can have 
discounts, you can have adders, you can have promotions. So all of these things uh, are incorporated into the CPQ solution. And then the Q stands for quoting. So you can quote either directly to the end user, you can quote to your dealers and distributors for your customers on behalf of their customers. Um, it'll help you streamline your efficiencies within your quoting processes, with the workflows, you can uh, move work from one person to the other so things don't get lost. And then you can also generate beautiful looking proposals as part of this uh, CPQ solution. And then on top of all of that, the cool thing is it also works with uh, your ERP. In our case, it's in 4XA. So as part of the order fulfillment process, you can turn the quotes into orders and all of the detail that has been done in the quoting process can flow through into XA when you place the order. So all of the work is done up front. You can create customer orders, manufacturing orders that includes the bills, the routers, and all of that uh, will just seamlessly go into XA. And then when you put on top of that, the 3D visualization and augmented reality, you have a really incredible product that is really um, unsurpassed by anyone else in the market. So when you think about a configurator, right, you, you probably have done some level of configuring yourself, whether it's, um, you know, going online and maybe picking out your car in terms of what color do you want? What engine do you want? What kind of tires do you want? Uh, what stereo systems? On and on and on. So uh, we're all somewhat familiar with that. I mean, even even going and ordering your lunch today, maybe you configured your own sandwich. You know, you you can order what kind of bread do you want? Do you want tomatoes? Do you, so we're all somewhat familiar with the configuring uh, process. So what we want to do is kind of take that same concept and roll it out to your customers and and or your dealers and distributors. And we can use things like images and radio buttons and drop down boxes to help drive uh, the selections for your customers. Um, in addition, uh, with 3D uh, capability, 3D visualization, uh, we can do some really cool things. Uh, in this particular case, you, you're seeing this hot tub or spa being uh, exploded. So you can see what's inside. Um, this is super helpful uh, especially if you, if your customers or dealers or distributors want to order replacement parts, they can literally explode this, not having to know what the product is that they're uh, wanting to buy, click on it, and then the configurator will come back and tell you what that part number is. So if they want a, re a replacement part for that drain, they can click on it and it'll tell them what that part number is and then they can order it. So it's some really cool things that we can do with the visualization. And we'll spend more time on that in our next session. With n 4 cpq too, you can literally take CPQ anywhere with, you know, at any time. Uh, through a variety of different devices. So whether it's a tablet or your laptop or even on a cell phone, uh, CPQ will work. Um, there is also an app that works well with uh, Infor CPQ. It's called the Infor Go app. And Charles will spend more time talking about that later on as well. And then, as I mentioned, you know, the really nice thing as a byproduct of all the work that you've done with CPQ, you can produce these beautiful looking proposals that in, can include uh, features like a cover letter, spec sheets, uh, warranty documents, uh, terms and conditions, marketing collateral, signature pages, all as part of uh, creating your proposal. As I mentioned, the Infor CPQ solution is really unsurpassed in the industry. And this is one of my favorite slides. And we can uh, we can spend a lot more time talking about the value that CPQ brings. Um, you know, this these sessions are meant to be more educational. We call them our lunch and learn sessions. So I'm not going to spend a ton of time on this. But this is one of my most favorite slides because uh, of the, the statistics. You know, 98% of customers surveyed said that they would recommend Infor CPQ. And out of a five-star rating, Infor is getting 4.8 compared to the next competitors. Um, so it just goes to show what an amazing solution that the Infor CPQ product is. All right, so 
that concludes the end of my session. Um, I'm going to turn this over to Charles Hood, who is, as I mentioned, one of our senior programmer analysts who has been in the Infor, uh, XA, uh, and CPQ consulting space for a very long time. Um, he's been working with uh, Mapex XA for 30 years, and he has been working with the CPQ product for about a dozen years. So um, lots of experience, a very technical resource. And if you've been with XA or Mapex over the course of time, you may have crossed paths with Charles uh, somewhere along the way. So without any further ado, Charles, I'm going to turn this over to you. All right, great. Thank you, Sherry. Allow me to share my screen and we'll get started. Okay, here we go. All right, can you see my screen okay? Yes, we can. Okay, very good. Oops, I already <laughs> pushed it forward. All right, welcome everyone. Thank you, Sherry, for that excellent introduction. I love your slides in that slide deck as well. It's pretty exciting stuff. Like Sherry said, I've been working with uh, CPQ now. Uh, of course, before it was branded as CPQ back when it was called the By Design Configurator since uh, late 2011 and seen a lot of really nice evolution, a lot of really nice uh, um functionality brought in, especially in the cloud edition that we're going to talk about today. So this is great. Thank you, everyone, for your time. So here's what I plan on covering today. We're going to talk about how we access enterprise quoting uh, cloud-based CPQ. So I'm going to be sticking exclusively to the cloud-based um, CPQ suite, which does include enterprise quoting. We'll talk about the correct nomenclature to use for CPQ configurator in the cloud on <laughs> another slide. Uh, we're going to talk about engaging visual content, bringing in images, um, arranging images for your um, products, putting the products into a product catalog. All that's within their enterprise quoting. Talk about enterprise quoting pricing. Sherry alluded to that. Uh, very robust uh, pricing capabilities. We'll talk about quotation augmentation, uh, adding a really nice looking quote document that's customer facing, emailing it downloading it, printing it, whatever you need to do with it, how it gets generated, what it looks like. Uh, we'll go through a brief uh, quote, quotation creation demo so you can see how EQ in action. And then we'll talk a little bit about converting a quote to an actual sales order. And Sherry talked about that a little bit. We'll talk about that as well. It's exciting now that uh, this now is live in XA. So. Uh, this has been live. The EQ to XA integration, cloud CPQ integration has been live since last August. So really exciting uh, stuff. Okay, so let's talk about the cloud CPQ environment, cloud CPQ and all its neighbors, so to speak. So if you do have a paid subscription to cloud CPQ, you actually obtain the entire um, InforOS suite or, the, or the, all the basic um, InforOS applications you'd expect in, in a backbone InforOS implementation. So Ion Desk is there you know, for workflows and event management and middleware and all that. The home pages, very robust uh, set of landing pages from where you can launch uh, into EQ from there, uh, things like that. Uh, you can have a net cust company-wide announcements and things like that there. Mingle is the collaboration application, uh, kind of a work-focused um, social media, if you would. Yes, that is an XA environment. Our EE environment XA is attached. That's a whole nother subject, how you can run XA inside of System I Workspace, inside of InforOS. So the five, uh, of course, IDM, we will be talking about IDM and for document management. That's going to come up uh, pretty much every one of these sessions, at least at one point. The five I want to focus on are the CPQ analytics, configure price quote, or actually CPQ, CPQ workbench, enterprise quoting, and enterprise quoting designer. So that's what the that ellipsis, the word designer is there. So it's those five are what I consider the cloud, um, and what Infor considers the cloud CPQ suite. Of course, we got some other stuff, the excellent burst data analytics, very powerful data analytics and the data fabric that helps support it. Then you have these uh, really amazing um, application rapid application development tools, Mongoose, and then the App Builder and the App, app Hub that allow you to roll out uh, applications onto mobile devices pretty quickly. But we are here today for the CPQ 
cloud uh, suite again. So it's the CPQ analytics, which is its own data analytics, kind of a subset of burst, if you will. And then uh, we're going to focus mostly though on enterprise quoting being an excellent front end into CPQ and also a way to load uh, sales orders that have been quotes into XA. So this is what's called, you know, the, the launch pad, the application launch pad. I just wanted you to see what's included in a cloud instance that has um, cloud CPQ and enterprise quoting. Okay, how sweet it is, that's for sure. Um, so I did mention the CPQ in the cloud really does refer to the entire suite. And I showed you um, the five that were there. You have the base CPQ, uh, the workbench, which is really a web-based version of Design Studio, or that's what it's heading to be. Uh, more and more, every time they release and update the cloud CPQ suite, we're, we're moving more and more in that direction of Design Studio being fully web-enabled. Uh, the CPQ and analytics, again, a great way to um, analyze, you know, win-loss uh, ratios for quotes, you know, what happened to quotes, did they become stale, were they won, were they lost, you know, were they abandoned, that kind of thing. The enterprise quoting is what we're going to look at the majority of today. And that, again, is that uh, great guided visual selling experience. It's the front end into CPQ, and it's also a way to generate uh, quotes that become orders that can end up as XA customer orders. And then you have the enterprise quoting designer. We'll be touching on this a little bit later when we look at the customer facing document. And it's a tool that customizes EQ's behavior and that includes both the screens within EQ and then any documents that you would generate within enterprise quoting. And of course, the big thing everyone does almost immediately when they learn about enterprise quoting designer is they remove the Infor logo <laughs> from the customer facing quote document and of course place their own company logo in there. So we'll talk a little bit about that. We'll be mo mostly focusing today though on enterprise quoting itself or EQ. Integrations uh, between the Infor CPQ suite and the outside world, of course, other ERPs, XA in particular, uh, for which interest us, but also in for you know uh, cloud suite industrial you know CSI in for LN, uh, the old Mac pack that runs on the IBM system I as well. Um, there's integrations to CRM packages, uh, in for CRM of course uh, being included, but uh, Microsoft Dynamics CRM, Salesforce.com things like that as well. There's definitely integration to e-commerce packages. The most notable one would be um, in for's Rhythm which is kind of like a shopping cart uh, type application uh, for a website. And then the engineering drawings can output models that CPQ can um, utilize in its rule sets. And it really opens up and revolutionizes the whole configuration experience, uh, both 2D and 3D. Next week, uh, two weeks from now, I'm sorry, two weeks from now, we'll be focusing a lot on the 3D uh, drawing augmentation capabilities. Today, we'll see a little bit of the 2D drawing um, automation. So AutoCAD, CreoCAD, SolidWorks, all of those integrate uh, at one level or another. They're all um, able to output models and then uh, CPQ can pick them up. All right, correct nomenclature. So this is more for myself so that I say the right thing. <laughs> EC is the enterprise configurator. So it's actually the configurator tool itself. We'll be seeing that in the demo and you'll be seeing some slides of that here in just a minute. It really is the uh, where you're walking through the configuration options. You know, I want this many, this color, this diameter, this shape, you know, all of that. I do want this, I don't want that, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, the enterprise configurator. So it's the actual configuration tool and then the rule sets that go with it and whatnot. Enterprise quoting is the web-based quote order entry portal that uh, either employees of your manufacturing company use or your um, dealers and distributors and maybe really, really large trusted customers use as well. Okay, and so then CPQ then really now, it, it, when you talk, especially in the cloud, this is true on premise as well, wasn't really as stressed. But uh, especially in the cloud, CPQ now, it really is the name for the whole connected suite, all five of those applications. So I'm going to try to keep myself honest and say EC. Now, I realize with XA, there is an EC module, the electronic commerce, you know, XA's EDI module. <laughs> so that's a little bit of an um, acronym collision there in the XA world. But I'm going to try to say EC, and I think you'll understand today when I'm 
saying that, what, what, what I'm meaning. Okay, how in the world do we get into EQ and the CPQ suite? All right, so you can have direct access through a cloud-based URL. That's what I'll be showing you in the demo. Uh, so ISE, we have our cloud-based instance of CPQ suite. And of course, that all that whole InforOS stack is there with it, IDM and Mingle and Burst and, and all of that. Uh, you also can use a UI pop-up access to uh, EQ CPQ. And then there's a custom UI that can tie uh, EQ CPQ to a company's website. And particularly, that's a way to launch the configurator, the uh, EC, from your own website. And there's several different ways uh, that can happen. But those are basically the uh, three three ways you can do that. Uh, I'm more, most used to the direct access, but that's not necessarily the only way. You can cause the uh, configurator, in particular the EC, to pop up even from your own company's website if you want to do it that way. All right. Um, Sherry mentioned this, and it's really great. We'll be talking about this a little more in detail next time when we talk about augmented reality. But in Go is a wonderful mobile app that runs lots of uh, the in Edge applications. Uh, some of the applications like Mingle and IDM have their own mobile app, but in Go does a great job of kind of pulling together a lot of the other ones. Now, enterprise coding can be accessed via the in Go mobile app. Uh, and so, for example, here I'm showing you a session where I was actually running through a configuration, and this is actually for the wooden door we'll be looking at later. So first I was selecting, you know, the wood species, cherry, hickory, maple, or oak, and then giving some dimensions. And then I was looking uh, at like a history of the um, decisions I had made. I was looking at the price. I was accumulating a price as I was running through the um, configuration session. So there it is. Uh, InforGo is a great, great app. I love it use it all the time. Um, obviously, the bigger the screen, the richer the experience, but it works just great. These are all, you know, um, screen captures right from my mobile phone, my iPhone. So it works pretty well. Okay, so the intention, uh, and Sherry touched on this, but the intention of the CPQ suite is to support the entire business process. So yeah, it is mostly kind of uh, seen as part of the quote sell buy part of the uh, business process, but it also um, touches, can touch a lot more than that, as you can see from this diagram here. Uh, so your website could be enhanced to launch the uh, EC, the Enterprise Configurator. Uh, remember there's, um, there's uh, ways to integrate with e-commerce tools, uh, CRM tools, uh, and engineering drawings and ERPs. So right from, uh, start to finish, uh, the CPQ suite can interact uh, with your entire business process all the way from start to go. And you end up in the end with, uh, as an XA customer, you'd end up with sales orders within XA. All right, let's talk, get a little more specific now. So here you're actually looking at part of the product catalog on the right side of the screen. You're looking at the product catalog within enterprise quoting. All right, so there's three different ways to get item uh, master data, if you will, into enterprise quoting. You can always do manual setup. You can um, go in and go to the um, menu option that will allow you to add new products to EQ and you can name them and associate images with them. And if they're configurable, you can tell them the rule set name for the enterprise configurator, uh, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, you can use Excel if you want to, to do the initial load that is documented uh, by Infor. And, but if you're uh, XA, ERP, then the ION uh, connectivity is there. Uh, so you can use the what's called the Sync Item Master BODs. Okay? And even though it's called Sync Item Master, um, it does load um, EPDM item revision data. And you can also uh, launch the um, publishing of uh, item master bods from the item warehouse as well, okay? Uh, but the XA ERP is this, what's called the system of record. That's very important in all these ION integrations, which system is the system of record. Hence the title of this slide, whose products are they? I tried to put whose products are they anyway, but didn't quite fit and I wanted to keep my slide title uh, sizing consistent. But um, EQ then doesn't really own 
the item master data XA does. Okay, and that's respected in the way uh, Ion communicates. XA syncs its data to EQ, and EQ rather passively receives that data and then presents it in its own way with images and all kinds of neat stuff. All right, here's a picture of IDM um, and for document management. Again, it's actually a different application, but it's within, if you have the um, CPQ Cloud Suite, it's one of those other um, in four OS applications that's included as well. Uh, so it's real easy to load images into IDM. Uh, you just click on the add document and you can drag the image right into the active area. Also, if you click on that active area, it'll launch one of those windows where, you know, you can look into folders and subfolders and, and find the image that you want. And then this gets real fancy with the properties and attributes. You can start linking um, images with uh, XA uh, key field information. And then you can start actually having these images show up if you're running Netlink and inside a system I workspace inside of N4OS, it gets really cool. Um, but that's where all that happens. So it's real easy to load the product images and then you can add your image. So this is basically a an EQ item master record, if you will. Of course, they're calling it, um, they use the term products. So you have a name and description and things like that. If it is configurable, you need to cl click the configurable checkbox and you let it know the rule set and namespace name. And if you're familiar with CPQ Design Studio, you understand all that. This basically tells it what rule set to launch when you tell EQ, hey, I want to order one of these. I want to order one of these uh, racing bikes in this case, then it knows exactly what rule set to launch. All right, you can have what's called product categories. And that's a very powerful tool, very handy tool for organizing your products in uh, the product catalog in enterprise quoting. So once you've set up a uh, product, it kind of like this was like the top part of the quote unquote item master for the racing bike. And this was like the bottom part. So we'll talk about the list prices in just a minute, but here's where I was setting up the product categories. You can also set up filter attributes that allow you to find items easier, you know, within your product catalog. So here I am, I'm, I'm telling this racing bike, basically I want it to be show up under the bicycles category in my product catalog. Okay, so a little more about the categories. So you define the categories and then you group the products together. Yes, you can have subcategories. And uh, you also, again, have those product filter attributes to make uh, searching a lot more powerful, a lot faster. Uh, and then you can assign a sort order within a category. Doesn't necessarily have to be alphabetic order. Um, you can you can state the sort order. You give it you know each each product gets a numeric value within that category, and that's the order that they get sorted in. And like the bottom bullet point says, this does allow a much neater and more organized presentation than just your standard product list. So if you just upload a bunch of stuff to EQ, it's not going to look so good, um, nearly as good as if you have a much neater and more organized uh, product, cat product categories based uh, product catalog. So a little tongue twister there, product category based product catalog. <laughs> Okay, some best practices. You definitely want to incorporate visually engaging product images, no doubt about that. Uh, EQ and um, EC, Enterprise Configurer, make that so easy. Uh, we'll talk more about that uh, next week. That'll be our primary focus, really, 2, 2D and 3D in particular. But um, even the static images are a huge help in making the configuration experience a much richer one, much easier one for the uh, end user. Again, you definitely want to set up a product catalog and you want to have well thought out categories, subcategories. And then uh, it's also good to have the, the product filters so you can filter attributes like color, size, material, things like that. We'll be looking at that in just in, as part of the demo. I'll show you a little bit about what we have set up because we uploaded uh, through ION a bunch of our um, item revision data into our cloud instance, our uh, test uh, tenant in our cloud instance of um, in 4 OS talk a little bit about pricing and the pricing flexibility options in EQ. Um, so say off the bat, XA with its multitudinous options for pricing and contracts and promotion, especially all the price books, then base prices, things like that. Um, you can't quite duplicate all of that, that's for sure, in uh, EQ, but you can, um, you can duplicate a good bit. 
So let's talk about what is there in enterprise quoting. So here I'm looking at a uh, price list and this is the default one. There's this default um, price list called base. So kind of like a XA's item revision base price. Um, and again, uh, how do you get the price list in there in the first place? Again, whose price list are they? They're really XA's. XA is the system of record. Uh, but you can, again, you can manually set up these price list records if you want to uh, for your items that you've already populated, your products, as EQ calls them. You can load uh, the data from an Excel uh, workbook, you know, worksheet within a workbook, and or you can load um, from XA using ION. You know, you have a data flow set up connecting XA and enterprise quoting. And this, these would be uh, sync price list bods, not sync item master bods this time, but sync price list bods. And again, XA being the ERP is the system of record for the base price list. Okay, each product has to have at least one um, entry and at least uh, so it's gotta be there in at least one of the price lists. This is kind of analogous to XA's um, item revision base price. You know, if all else fails, it's gotta at least have that item revision base price if it's nowhere to be found in any of the price books, promotion, contracts, or anything like that. So same thing here. There's got to be at least one price in one of the price lists for each product. OK, um, by default, the products are entered into that base price list. And again, I always think of that as XA's item revision base prices. Now, for configured items, the standard price will be 0, uh, since each configuration is going to generate its own price. So as you go through a configuration session choosing different materials and lengths and widths and diameters and different gauges of steel and how many of this and how many of that, you know, all that's going to affect the pricing. Your dealers, if you've authorized dealers to your instance of enterprise quoting, they can be assigned their own price list. And even each direct representative that works for you as your manufacturing company can be assigned their own price list as well. And then, like XA, again, you can't really duplicate everything XA has because XA's pricing is just so amazingly flexible. But you can do discounts beyond the price list, that's for sure. So direct customers, you can have a direct percentage off a list. Uh, you go to the order placement details tab, and then there's a business terms section. And this applies pretty much down the line dealer customers. Um, in, this, in this case, you go to the customer default terms tab in the business terms section. And then dealers and then sub-dealers, if you will, child dealers, dealers within dealers, uh, you can do the same thing. So um, it gets a little, you have to think about what you're doing as that third point mentions. Uh, once you have dealers, child dealers, what you enter there for a discount percentage off a list um, overrides the customer discount. So but as long as you understand all that, it, it's not nearly as complex as XA's pricing. Um, but it's, uh, it does have a lot of flexibility. And then, of course, there's always the ability to override the price at the um, line level in a quote uh, anytime you need to. So even after all this, this is all the automatic pricing. And it's just like XA, you can override you know, the base price or the selling price. And that's what we're going to see here. So you have quote and order uh, line item discounts. Um, so you have it. Each line item, as we'll see in a minute, uh, has an actions menu. You can then say, hey, I want to adjust the price. And you can update the additional discount at the line level. You can increase it or decrease it. Um, this overrides any discount that would have been applied from the header level. So this line is going to get an 8.75% discount, not the 6.75 that the header is applying by default to the line items. Now, you notice here, if you went over the discount threshold, then you need to submit that for approval. Uh, there's two levels of approval. You can have the, the basic kind of approval. Anyone that's set up in the pricing approval list will receive a notification, email notification. And one of them will have to um, either accept or reject your request for the extra discount. Or if you want to get more involved and use uh, ION, then ION can actually kick off an official ION workflow. Oops. And then if you are going to submit pricing for approval, you kind of fill out this little form, if you will. You can you are allowed to um, put comments in and all that. Then you click submit. And then that quote kind of gets frozen until that um, pricing approval gets resolved. All right. And again, there's you can have the, the basic uh, pricing approval through uh, notifications 
or you can actually kick off an, a much more formal ion workflow and you can have the different steps and escalations and decisions and uh, a certain discount amount would go to follow a certain branch another discount amount would follow a uh, you know a different logic branch so uh, all the um, heavy duty firepower of ion workflow would get involved there okay so let's kind of tie a lot of this together and talk about how an eq we can do quotation autom augmentation <laughs> and autom aut automation and augmentation right <laughs> okay so we want to add an attachment to a quote that could then be included with um, the quote, official quote document that gets sent out. That's very easy to do. So for example, this is a quote uh, screen. I did um, eliminate the header section just so I could make it bigger. Uh, and then here's the, um, the pop-up that appears. So attachments is one of the things I can do. And then after I've selected attachments, I can click on add, and then I can um, go to whatever file folder location wherever that attachment's located, that attachment will then be attached to that quote. Uh, you do have to tell it in the setup, uh, EQ has a setup screen or multiple setup screens. This is um, one of the ones in particular that applies to the entire application. And there are uh, preferences here and you tell it the uh, supported types of attachments that you're willing to support. You know, this is basically all images, JPEGs and PDFs and PNGs and whatnot. Okay. Line items can also have attachments if you want them to. So not just the quote itself, but also the uh, line items can also have attachments. Comments, all kinds of places to add comments, which is good. So because you're used to that as XA customers, users, you're used to, um, you know, uh, customer comments, CO header comments, CO line item comments, you know, shipment shipment comments, invoice comments, special charge comments, et cetera, et cetera. So same thing here, a header, terms, pricing, all these different types of comments. Then this is just at the header level. And then uh, you can go into um, and add uh, de as detailed comments as you need at the line item as well. All right, so you can put in there whatever you need to, and these will show up on the customer facing document. And of course they'll be accessible uh, when you access EQ, uh, you'll be able to see these as well, but they will be on the customer facing document. All right, so you saw from two screens back, you had header terms and pricing comments. And here they are showing up. Uh, this is a little snip actually from a document that was attached to a quote. So you can see how you have those levels of comments. You have a very powerful versioning control on the quotes. So at any point you can kind of freeze that version of the quote. And then if you want to move forward, then you can move forward with a new version of the quote. Uh, each version definitely has a unique identifier. And then um, if you do convert that quote to an order, the, the version that gets quoted becomes the order and the, all the other versions become closed. So there's a whole whole art and science behind this uh, version control. It's a very, very powerful feature. This is the, uh, what they call the bid document, generate the bid. This is the customer facing quote document. So real easy to generate. Once you're, you're done with your quote, uh, you click on the, the print menu. You can see it there. I've highlighted it in yellow. Um, generate document and then populate the print options. Here's kind of a sample one. Uh, I have one, a wooden door that's a 2D drawing there. So just a little bit of what's going on there. You can see your a lot of your configuration options and you know quantity and, and price and whatnot. So this is just a one little part of uh, an entire bid document because there's the header, there's all those comments. There's room at the bottom for your company's uh, legalese, you know, any disclaimers and whatnot that you need to fit in. You can have your company logo, of course, and all of that depending on how you set this up in um, Enterprise Quoting Designer. So let's see here. Let me bring over our instance of Enterprise Quoting. If I can get it, there we go. I'm starting to get it from the other screen. I do want to, I'm gonna just bring it over because I was playing with the um, product catalog earlier, but let's actually start 
here and home page. So here's what you where you would land normally if you followed the um the um URL. So we have this nice little landing page and we're welcoming you all. I hope you all feel welcome to our 2023 ISC CPQ summer journey. Uh, there's a link, you know, you can learn more about the summer journey. It's the ISC's uh, webpage about that. So this is home pages. There's widgets. I do need to make my widgets back into four wide. That's not hard to do, but uh, I want to get into EQ here. But just uh, you can have company wide announcements in here and all kinds. Of, and you can have, you know, so I have five possible home pages. So this is just one of the ones I have. All right. So here's that app launcher I was showing you. And here is enterprise quoting. So let me go to direct quotes. All right, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a new quote. All right, I'm going to go a little quick for uh, time's sake, but I want to be thorough as well. So I'm going to choose this uh, machinery row as my customer. And let's see, let's, okay, they have a base. I'm going to put in the PO number. Let's say they're a nice... Um, XA customer, and they have a uh, XA, you know, procurement management, so P and six uh, digits, so seven character PO number. Okay, all that's fine. Uh, there are a lot of settings I can change from the default settings at the header detail of my quote. Header detail, listen to me, header level, header level. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going through here. I'm actually going to keep the default ship to at, at this point. But there's uh, all kinds of stuff I can default down here. There's the comments I was talking about, um, header, uh, terms, and pricing. Um, OK, I actually typed that fairly well. OK, requested ship date. Let's say they want this by the end of August. OK, and there's all these other things I can set up as well. Um, so, OK. All right, I, uh, I don't know if I would want to do that. OK, here, I'll do this. <laughs> OK, all right, um, so I'm fine. I, I have the header set up uh, the way I'd like it to be. Um, I can give it a quote name. Um, OK. Um, so I have all that, so I'm good. Now I can go back to the quote lines. So again, what I've done so far is I I chose the customer that's going to be associated with the quote, and then I did fill in a little bit of information here. I did the ship to and the PO number, and then I edited some header details. So now I'm ready to actually look at um, and add a line item or more. So I'm going to do, since I got my search stuff. Yeah, this is the guy I like the best right here. And this label, by the way, shows up on the quote uh, document. All righty, so I click the configure button. So what should be happening here in just a second is um, the, um, there it goes. So now that launched, let's see, I might want to make this a little bigger. Okay. All right, so you saw, uh, I already had a screen print of this. So this is a wooden door. I'm document, um, document configuring a wooden door. Uh, so first I choose, you know, the type of wood that the door is made out of, then a stain color. And the stain color does change based upon the um, the species of the wood. And what's going on over here on the right, if you've never seen CPQ before, several things are going on here. I have this summary screen, which basically shows all the options that I've made and then any default options. And of course, all these dimensions will, we're going to be changing, uh, or a lot of them anyway, here in a second. And this so far is the everything that's contributing to my um, configured uh, price, so my to total configured base price. So so far there was a base price of 219, just as the base price of a door. And then uh, because I chose uh, this hickory wood, there is a $40 charge for that as well. And we're going to look at the image here in just a second. Okay, so they have these um, profiles and styles. These are pretty cool. Uh, if you know a lot about woodworking and doors, I'm going to choose the quarter round. And then the style, I'm going to go with the scoop panel. Exterior treatment, like polyurethane or something I just chose. Okay, now I'm at the dimensions. 
And here's where uh, a model that was exported out of an engineering drawing package can now uh, become the basis here. And I'm actually, to make this a little better for you all, I'm gonna decrease what's over here and increase this. So here's this door. And so right now it has all the dimensions. And as I configure over here, for example, I can change the door style and I can make it an arch type door. So like that, okay? And the neat thing is every time you change one of these dimensions, it automatically recalculates all of them. And so um, I, the math uh, bewilders me sometimes. I know Sherry was the math major, so she understands all the stuff going on underneath here with the circles and radiuses and pi r squared and all that. But uh, for example, if I change the door height from 80 to maybe I'll go to 85, you'll notice it's gonna compensate with all these other numbers. Whoops, that's the width, I want the height. Okay. All right, I did 85 too far. <laughs> but you can see how the numbers change. It looks a little skinnier, uh, not because the width has changed, but because it got taller with at the same width. And of course I can change the width too. Uh, no problem there. I could just enter the width that I want as well. Oh, okay, see, I tried to go too too wide <laughs> for that um, that radius door. So you can have uh, pretty robust logic built into your uh, rule sets. There we go. All right, so I, I made it uh, wider. And then all these um, rails and uh, the, all these terms, styles and rails, I'll do, I'll do the lock rail, for example, the one that's in the middle, that's my understanding of the lock rail. Okay, so I did that to 10 and then it compensated everywhere else. So it's pretty neat. I'm getting this automatic drawing as you saw from my slide, the automatic drawing is gonna be show up on the quote document. All right, so I thought you'd like to see that, see the, the drawing automation for the 2D drawing. And that did come from a uh, software package, either SolidWorks or uh, AutoCAD Inventor, one of those. Um, next week, we'll be looking at 3D uh, drawing capabilities. So I'm just gonna say I want some hinges and then I'm gonna say I'm done. All righty, back to my lines. And for the sake of time, that is going to be my only uh, line item. But here I go, and here I, I could go in here. I told you about uh, attachments, adjusting the price, for example. Uh, I'm gonna give it a little bit of a discount or a fairly nice discount, actually. Okay, oops, I went a little too fast, uh, fat fingered that. Um, it actually was telling me, hey, um, this, um, it's more than, Remember I was telling you, it's more than um, you're allowed to simply uh, discount. So you really, you must submit this. It's saying kindly, it's being nice and polite, but you must submit this for approval. Okay. Uh, otherwise the quote's gonna be in an unapproved uh, status and nobody wants that. Go back to this. Okay. So what I'm basically gonna do then here is I'm gonna say good enough. And uh, although, I, uh, yeah, I should generate the document for you. Um, oh yeah, yeah, I froze it out because of that. Uh, <laughs> that um, pricing, until I get that pricing resolved, I can't do anything else with this. So that's actually protecting you. So I'm gonna convert it to an order. Oh, I can't do that either. <laughs> Normally, if I hadn't done that pricing uh, approval, I could convert it to an order and then the order could uh, get pushed to uh, XA. All right, so I'm gonna move this back out of the way. I hope you um, benefited from seeing seeing that. So we did take a look and just a little bit here, uh, options for converting a quote to an order. Uh, you can either convert the entire quote and then all the line items become part of an order. And then you can do a partial order. So only certain lines become part of the part of the order. Okay. All right. And then any line items that are on an order can no longer be edited. And then to place an order, you click the place order button. Uh, once it's already um, in order and you place the order and that actually will kick off ION and you will, uh, if all is well, uh, which it should be, you will get a customer order in XA from EQ. So that's what this is all about. You then have an order in XA. You can no longer uh, work with that order in EQ because XA is the system of record. And uh, you've just basically gone from a quote in EQ to an order to an XA customer order. And that's it for me. So I'm done, Sherry. There's my um, contact information if you need. And thank you everybody for the opportunity to share this with you today. Appreciate it. Thank you, Charles. Appreciate it. Um, but 
We have five minutes left, so I'm just going to spend a couple of uh, seconds, uh, minutes going through the uh, building of your prototype. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen now. And hopefully you can see my screen okay. Um, so we talked about the building blocks. So the very first building block is uh, would require you to pick an item that one of your customers could order that has options, whether it's color, size, dimensions, other optional features, um, and then send me a picture of your selected item. And if you could do this before our second session, that would be great. So that's kind of the first step is pick an item and then send me a photo. And then the second and third building blocks are require a little more work, uh, but not a lot. What we what we want to do is create a, a limited bill of material and limited router uh, so we can push this into XA. And uh, we have a template that we built, and I will send this to you before the end you know, before the end of this week. So everyone who's on this call will get an email from me that has this template. And let me just share with you what this template looks like. Um, so here's an example that we did uh, where we've identified, you know, using the wood door as an example, right? So you saw Charles pick, you know, the wood species, you know, and then the selection of some of the options that are available. Um, and then we'll need that parent item number, um, your work facility, the operation sequence, um, and the component item number quantity, and then unit of measure. And then I will, as your template, I will fill in kind of a customer designate de designation so that when we import these into CPQ, uh, we'll be able to filter and you'll be able to just look at your items. Um, so this kind of gives you a feel for what we're looking for. So very limited. Uh, so we don't want your whole bill. <laughs> we don't want your, all your routers. We just want you to pick an item, pick a real simple subset, you know, one, one of the features, uh, a couple, you know, two to three to four options um, that you might have for that selection. In this case, uh, in our example, it's a question. It's a yes, no question. Do you have glass panels? You know, do you want glass panels? Yes or no? Yes, we want glass. No, we don't. And if you do, then it's going to send it to the work facility to cut it. Um, and if you don't select glass, then there's nothing to do. So it just kind of gives you an example of what we're looking for. Um, you know, so you'll have two tabs in this template. This example will be included in the, in your workbook. And then we'll have a blank one that looks like this with your name filled out on the end. And then you can fill in um, the, the options and selections that you have. And if you could do this before the third session in August 9th, that would be helpful. And then circling back here, the fourth building block that we're going to ask for is either a 2D or 3D CAD rendering of your product. And if we could get that before the fourth session, that would be great. And then we're, there'll be a short questionnaire as part of this fifth building block. And then we would ask, and we'll walk you through these questionnaires before we're all said and done here. And we're, we'll walk through all of these in greater details over the next couple of weeks. Um, but the the last part would we would request that we get the questionnaire back before InPower, and then at the InPower conference, uh, we will work with your prototype, and you will be able to get some hands-on experience and run through all those things that Charles just did uh, in terms of generating a quote, um, how you can select your options, and then maybe we can tweak them as we go. We had fun last year. Um, you know, using augmented reality and putting the products on the conference room table that we were using. So it, we, we had a good time with that. But make sure you, you have to register for InPower. So if you haven't done so already, um, you can go to the IBMI Work Out Loud site and make sure you go to the InPower uh, section and register. And then there's a second part to this. And you, you would have to register for the CPQ workshop too. Um, and that's done with uh, Eventbrite. This is something that ISE is doing. So through Eventbrite, if you could register for that, we'll be uh, it'll be a three-hour workshop from nine to noon where we'll be working uh, hands-on with your with your prototype. So that's all I have, and I think we did good. We're at the top of the hour. Um, do we have any other questions that have come in? I think we do. Let's see, um, are we sending this template 
to us after the webinar. Yes, I will send the template uh, to you uh, after, well, at the end of the week. I will have it to you hopefully by the end of this week, uh, now that I have everybody's names. Um, let's see, we had other questions too about, you know, is this a competing product with Lexel's ComNet? No, it is not. Um, I guess, you know, ComNet would probably more compete with Infor's Rhythm solution, uh, where ComNet already integrates with XA, Rhythm uh, does not, so that would have to be integrated. It is not a commerce solution uh, as much as a quoting tool meant for your internal folks or your external dealers and distributors. Are there any other questions um, that that anyone has. If you do, you can just enter them in the chat. If not, I think we're good for the day. Everyone will also get um, a link for the recording of this session that I will also email to you. We do thank you for your time and we are looking forward to working with you and your prototype over the next few weeks. We'll see you in two weeks.